How's it going everyone? My name is Sean and today I wanted to go over a tutorial about how to create a tank game just like this where you've got two tanks, one controlled by the player and one controlled by the computer and you go around and you shoot pellets at each other. So if you want to follow this tutorial, uh, go ahead and open a new project. So we have the scratch cat here, but we're not going to need the scratch cat for this tutorial. So you can go ahead and delete that. Let's paint a new sprite here. And we're going to need two sprites for each tank. One is going to be the base and one is going to be the barrel of the gun that you actually shoot out of. So here's how I'm going to make mine. I'm going to go ahead and pick a grayish color. And I'm going to create a square. And I'm going to make this a perfect square by holding down shift. And I'm going to check the size here just for uh, relativity. That seems to be a good size for me. So I'm going to go ahead and center that. Now clicking off of that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and swap my color to be a more bluish color and a bit brighter too. Now I'm going to create another square on top of it. That looks good to me. And now I want to have some sort of way to determine what's the front and what's the back of this. So. I'm going to get rid of my outline and I'm going to make my color a bit darker. Now I'm going to go to my square tool again and I'm going to make some decals. One's going to be at the front here and we'll make a few on the side as well. All right, that looks good to me. Now we want to add some finishing touches on this. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything. I'm going to make everything bigger by holding down shift and pulling it out just a little bit. Actually don't hold shift, got that wrong. And we're going to make sure everything's centered once again. Now there's our base tank, let's go ahead and name it tank base and create a new sprite. Now we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to go ahead and use the dropper tool to get our color from here. Oh, I guess that doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and uh, select our color here and make a new square in the center. And we're going to make sure this square has an outline this time. Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's go ahead and add a barrel to this. and adjust it till it looks right. Now let's go ahead and select everything and move it to be in the center. Now um, let's go ahead for both sprites, rotate to them to the side. This will be important later. If we start rotating it by selecting it and hitting that rotate icon, we can hold shift to snap it into place and we want them to both be facing to the right. Now make sure everything's centered again. We want this one to be centered in the middle of the larger box. And we want this one to be centered in the center. All right, we got our tank up and running. Now let's make just a quick pellet. So let's go ahead and simply select blue as our color again, zoom in a little bit and create a circle and center that. Let's go ahead and name these two things tank barrel and pellet. Now let's go ahead and add the code necessary for this. In our tank base, we want the tank to be able to move left and right and pivot in place. And then we want our up and down arrow keys to be able to move it forward and backwards. So let's go ahead and start by adding a flag and a forever loop. Now we need to start checking to see if those buttons are being pressed. So let's start with the first one. The first button is going to be our right arrow. When right arrow is being pressed, let's go ahead and turn five degrees. Let's check to see if that works. All right, that works. Let's use that exact same functionality to turn to the left by duplicating this. Change this to left arrow and negative five degrees. If we put that back in there, you'll see we can rotate in both directions. 
Now we're going to use something similar to move forward and backwards. So if we duplicate this again and put this back in here, we can say up arrow rather than turning right is going to move us forward three steps. Let's go ahead and check this out. All right, it moves forward, but the tank barrel is not attached. We'll fix this in the next step. For now, let's go ahead and duplicate this and change this to negative three and change this to be the down arrow. Now if we start, we can move backwards, forwards, and rotate in place. Now let's fix that tank barrel thing. So if we go to the tank barrel and we start a new script set up in a similar manner with a forever loop, we can simply all the time have this sprite go to the position of the tank base. So that works fine, but we also want the tank barrel to turn in the direction that the mouse is pointing. That's very simple. We can simply have it also point in the direction of the mouse pointer all the time. So that works great. Now we want to have the pellets be able to be shot every time we click the mouse down. So we don't want this dot to be here at the start of the game. So let's go ahead and add in a flag and say looks hide. This will hide it at the start of the game. Now, we don't want to use this exact pellet to shoot. We want to use clones of it. So after we hide, we're going to start checking by adding a forever loop to see if the mouse is being pressed. If the mouse is being pressed, we're going to create a clone of ourselves. Now, if we just simply create a clone, will create too many. As long as the mouse is being held down, the game will keep creating clones as fast as possible. So we need to add a little bit of a delay. Let's make it 0.25 seconds before this script can loop again. Now, when we start as a clone, whenever we create a clone here, we're gonna do a few things. The first thing we need to do is move the sprite to the tank barrel. Now it's still invisible at this point, but what we can do is we can rotate it to point towards the mouse pointer similar to the barrel is. Next we want to move it forward about 30 steps. The reason for this is the middle of the tank barrel is right in the middle of the tank. We don't want it to spawn from there, we actually want it to spawn at the tip of the uh, barrel. So that'll move it there, and once that's been done, then we can show it. So it'll appear at the very tip there, and now we need to have it start moving. So add another forever loop, and add move three steps. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. That looks pretty good, but you can see that they start pooling up at the edges here. We simply want to get rid of them once they hit the edge. So let's add a simple condition here. If touching edge, then we're going to delete this clone. Let's go ahead and test it out here, and then we'll add in our second player. Awesome, it works fine and our tank can move around just great. So let's make this easy and duplicate the assets that we have right now. So if we duplicate all of them, we have a good foundation. Let's go ahead and change the colors of these real quick. So if we hit the mouse pointer, we can change this to, let's say, a lighter red. And if we highlight, if we shift click these, we can also change the color. Let's make this a bit of a deeper red. And let's do a similar thing with all of these. And the palette. All right, awesome. Everything looks good. But as you can see, if we start the game, it's a bit odd because the tanks will both move because of the player's control. So we can't have that. Instead, let's go and change a few things. So first, we're not gonna need normal movement controls for the tank. We'll get to uh, its movement controls a bit later. Let's go ahead to, and go to the tank barrel. And instead of going to the tank base, we want to go to tank base 2, that's the red tank base. And for the pellet, similarly, we want to go to 
tank barrel to, the red barrel, and instead of pointing towards the mouse pointer, we want it to point towards the tank base of the original player. Similarly, um, rather than having this tank barrel point in the mouse direction, we want it to always point at the blue player. So let's go back here and point towards tank base. Awesome, so this should work, but we can't uh, have it spawn its own pellets yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Rather than having anything too complicated, let's simply, instead of having the mouse down, have it always be shooting at one second intervals. Awesome, all we have to do is add movement controls now. So what I'm going to do is hit stop and move the tank to a good starting location up here. If you go into your motions now, this should update to its current position. If it's something different, move it to be roughly negative 200 and positive 140. So before the forever loop, we want it to snap there. And we also want it to point in the 90 degree direction. That'll set it up nice and good right there. Now we want it to go back and forth. So that will require it going forward in a straight line, turning 180 degrees and repeating. Turning, repeating, turning, repeating. So we, what we need to do is have a few repeat blocks. So if we repeat moving, say, three steps, and we do that about 140 times, it should move it the length of the screen. After that, we want to do something similar. So we'll duplicate it. And instead of moving, we want it to turn five degrees. Now we want to, it to turn a total of 180 degrees once it's hit the end here. So if we take out our calculator and we take 180 degrees that we want it to turn and we divide that by the five degrees that it's turning each repetition, we get 36 repetitions. So let's go ahead and put in 36. Let's go ahead and test this. Now, I know this barrel is underneath, and we can fix that real quick. But that seems to work just nicely. So last thing we have to do, hit stop, go ahead and just drag this out and put it back on top. And once we start our game, everything works perfectly. All you would have to do at this point is add a nice backdrop. And you've got your game. In the next video, we're gonna go over how to actually have these bullets damage the players and how to actually have some win conditions and maybe throw in a bit of terrain. Thanks for watching. If you wanna check out that tutorial, go ahead and click the next video.